Hey, Arctic family and friends, thanks for joining us once again in the ongoing coronavirus saga. <laughs> hey guys, if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for tuning in. If you are already uh, part of the Arctic family, we want to continue equipping you with uh, as much uh, information and strategy that uh, can hopefully help you during these challenging days. I've got four tips for you, four practical things that you can do just to manage uh, fear today. If you're a truck driver and you're out on the road and you're continuing to interact with shippers, receivers, um, other motoring public who are essential employees and so they have to be out and about grocery stores as you try and get supplies for your personal uh, consumption in the truck or as you try to purchase for your family back home what do we do what can we do today to minimize the impact that fear has on us in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic Firstly, we can disinfect our brains, disinfect our brains. One of the challenges of living in the information age with all the technology that we have is we have more information than any time period of the human population in the history of the world. Right now, we know everything. Something happens on the other side of the world, we know it almost instantly. And there's a lot of awesome things that come along with technology. The negative is you have non-stop information. You have conflicting information. You have way too much. And so the first strategy to figure out how to manage and minimize the fear response in our physical bodies and our emotional uh, selves is to disinfect our brains. We have got to limit the number of sources that are pouring information into us. And you may simply want to take some period of time during which you're going to disconnect. You're going to disconnect from social media. You're going to disconnect from the news on television. Um, we, we know generally the information about coronavirus. It is spread uh, person to person through droplets through the air and that's why everybody's recommending six feet of distance between individuals because if somebody does cough or sneeze the majority of those droplets that carry the virus are going to fall back to the ground prior to reaching six feet of distance away from the person who coughed. Um, we know that washing our hands is the primary way to protect us because it's going to help avoid germs coming into contact with our mouth, nose, eyes, uh, some entry point to our body where the virus can get in, right? So we should have a general knowledge of what is going on with the virus, how it's passed, how to slow it down. And beyond that, as we continue to watch the news and consume and consume and consume information, there is a, uh, the law of diminishing returns says we're not getting as much help from that continued information after a certain point. At a certain point, we're not learning really anything new or anything helpful. We're just being reminded of how uh, stressful the situation is. And so if we choose to stop receiving information for a period of time, it can really help calm us down. It can really help slow down the brain that's going 100 miles an hour trying to figure out what do we do. And so we can make a choice to disinfect our brains, to disconnect for a period of time, even just 24 hours, can be very, very helpful, and it can help to shift our mindset. Sometimes the words that we use help us or hurt us unintentionally. So we could say, 
I have to be at home if you're somebody right now who is sheltering in place. Or you can say, I'm, I'm safe at home. So I have to stay at home or I get to be safe at home. Huge perspective shift. You can say, I have to go to work because I'm an essential employee. So I have to uh, possibly be exposed because I'm an essential employee. Or you can say, wow, there's so many people today who don't have work and who don't have a paycheck and who don't know how they're gonna pay their next month's rent and I get to continue working and that's really a blessing. So it's all about perspective in how we want to approach the situation. Number two, don't future trip. What does that mean? Stop focusing on tomorrow. Stop focusing on the future. Stop focusing on the what ifs. Stop focusing on the maybes. We can absolutely overwhelm our minds with all of the worst case scenarios, the what ifs, the what ifs, the what ifs. And there are a lot of what ifs and there certainly are people who are experiencing the worst case scenario. It is absolutely a tragedy that people around the world and now here in the States are gonna get sick from this virus and some of them are going to pass away. It's absolutely, uh, it's horrible. It's very sad uh, for those families, for those that are left behind. It doesn't seem fair. But the more we focus on all those what ifs, the more we continue to kind of feed the fear that exists within every single one of us. So. Instead, we can simply ask the question, what can I do to make today better? I don't have any control over tomorrow. I don't have any control over next week, but I do have some control over today. What can I do today to make today the best day that it can be? And that can be simply, it's a simple question, but it can be very, very helpful. Number three, take small controlled actions. There are things that every single one of us can do that are 100% within our control to reduce the chance of our own exposure and also to help protect those that are around us. We've talked in every single video about hand washing. It is the number one uh, thing that is going to help protect yourself. Also social distancing that everyone is recommending now not being close together with other people. Yes, it certainly feels um, burdensome at a certain point in time. My wife and girls have basically been at home continuously for weeks now, and they're going a little stir crazy. But we have to remind ourselves that this is part of the process that we are participating in to try and help stop the spread of the coronavirus. And so what we can do is take small controlled actions. Control what you can control. If you're a truck driver, you have control over the inside of your tractor. You can clean it, you can organize it, you can keep it safe and sanitized. One of our drivers today asked me, can I request that no one uh, is in my truck until this coronavirus stuff passes and I said absolutely there's no reason that a technician today has to get in your truck now that's with the knowledge that I have right now if he has some sort of an electrical problem inside the cab then we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there but what we know right now is he has every ability to control the fact that no one else is going to be getting into that cab number four we've got to act based upon evidence and not based upon emotion Emotion is gonna to try to overtake our thinking brain and we need to slow down enough to take a slow, rational approach to our day. Remember, all we can do is focus on today. All I can do is ask the question, what can I do to make today better? Control the small things that I can control and make it through today. We'll worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. So let's recap. Number one, we need to disinfect our brains. Too much information is coming in. Fear is the response. We're overwhelmed. 
And sometimes we just need to disconnect for a period of time and let our perspective shift and be basically uh, reset. Number two, no future tripping. No future tripping. Let's focus on today. Number three, control what you can control. And number four, make decisions based upon evidence and not based upon emotion. It's a tough time, guys. These are unprecedented days in my lifetime. Certainly have never seen anything like this. And yet, I certainly believe that there is a brighter future. I absolutely believe that we're going to uh, survive this. If you are not currently driving for a company, if you have been put out of service because your industry is not really moving a lot of freight right now, we do have a couple empty trucks and we would be happy to have a conversation with you about what it looks like to join the Arctic family. You can follow the link below in the description to learn more about us or give us a call and uh, we'd love to add you to the Arctic family. Guys, be safe out there, keep washing your hands and control the small things that you can control. We'll get through this together. Thanks.